Hey everyone, uh, today I want to talk about linear equations, linear regression, and correlation and show you a couple of tools uh, that you have at your disposal in order to calculate these things. So what I have over here is an equation that has been given to me um, by a textbook. Uh, this equation is to predict the average college GPA based on a high school GPA. So that's going to be my y and x variables, my independent and dependent, my explanatory um, when I'm talking about the x variable and my response variable. So I'm just going to rewrite this um, for my own sake as y equals, and I'm a math person, so I like to write it in y equals mx plus b. So I'm going to do the 0 0.9077 times x plus um, b which is 0 0.03. So notice I just rearranged that. It's helping me recognize the fact that this is my y variable and this is my x variable. And that's going to be important for a little bit later. Now, um, one of the reasons I guess it's important right away is I'm going to switch these things around because as a math person, I always like to show the y's after the x's and it will help when I actually insert a chart. Um, which is where I normally start. Once I have my x and y variables, I'm going to use the insert command and the chart in order to get a line that is going to try and predict what's happening here. Um, I want the trend line. I want to see it. I want the equation. I want the correlation for that. So I'm going to customize this, click on the series, scroll down until I find the trend line, and that's going to plot that line right on here for me. And then I'm also going to have it use the equation. Now you'll notice my equation is very close, but probably a rounded off version of what they gave me, 0.908 plus 0 0.03 is if you round those. So my equation is really good. Um, the It's just slightly rounded off. The one they gave me is just a tad bit better. Um, I'm also going to show the R squared on here, which is 0 0.881. That R squared is referred to as the coefficient of determination. So right now, I have a lot of things answered for me. I've got slope, which is a 0 0.9077. I've got an, a y-intercept, which is 0 0.03. I've got this coefficient of determination, which is way too long for anything. We just call it R squared which I now have to make this bigger to write in here, which according to this is 0.881. Now the thing to remember is that a lot of places do not really look for the coefficient of determination. What they're really looking for is the correlation. They're looking for the measurement of how much um, these two variables move in conjunction with one another. And the correlation is really the square root of the coefficient of determination. Now keep in mind you can always find the correlation by doing the formula for correlation and highlighting your y variables and highlighting your x variables. Um, they should come out very close. This one though is rounded off so that's why you're seeing the difference but not a huge difference in there. Now a couple of the other things that I'm typically wanting to find um, and have at my fingertips is going to be all related to the error, sometimes known as the residual uh, of these lines. I'd like to know about the error. Um, we end up talking about the sum squared error as well as the mean squared error and standard error. The standard error is really a lot like the standard deviation. I like to think of it as it's telling you on average how far is every point away from the line. Because if you look here, not every one of these points is directly on my prediction line. And that line is the prediction. Some are above, some are below. Very few are right on there. So we see these ones abbreviated quite often as SSE, um, the mean squared error as MSE, and the standard error, sometimes just as S, um, I see it as SE quite a bit as well. Now, we do have options for doing that. To find the sum squared error um, and do this by hand, and I'll do it for one, and I'll, I'll talk about it, I'm just gonna move these over here, I'll do it for one. We could go through each one of the points on here and plug in our X into our equation. 
and do like equals 0 0.9077 times my x value plus 0 0.03. And I could do that for each one of them. And then Excel makes it really easy to autofill and say like, all right, here is my predicted value, right? My y hat value. For each of these values, then I'd have to subtract the actual minus the predicted. So I'd have my y minus my y hat. And again, I would do that for all of them. Once I'm done, whoops, it didn't pull that down. Once I'm done with that, I'd have to square all of these things. So let's go ahead and square this. And should hit the autofill button. I'm not used to that popping up all the time. So there I have that. And now I could calculate the sum squared error by just doing the sum of all of those things I just received, right? Now, where it gets a little tricky is the mean squared error, the formula, to kind of give us some degrees of freedom. The mean squared error is going to divide that number not by one, two, three, four, five, six items. It's going to divide it by four. So my mean squared error would take that divided by four. And then my standard error would take the square root of that kind of like the standard deviation, which is why I compared these two things all together. We squared all of these differences, the differences in the y's, right? The y minus the average was the standard deviation or x minus the average. And here we did the y minus the prediction. Um, and then we squared all of them, et cetera. So my standard error is 0.27. A small standard error means that a lot of these points are actually pretty close to the line, very similar to how a strong correlation works, right? And I should have mentioned when I did the correlation that I knew it was positive because here, again, whenever you take the square root um, or you square something like r squared, it's always going to be positive. So that's why this one's positive. Now, that's great, right? It doesn't take too long. There's a little manual coding in there. You can do it by hand. It's not the end of the world. But I would like to find a way to do that a little bit quicker. So I am going to go ahead and install that... Uh, tool pack. I'm going to go through the entire installation. Um, the way to do that is go to add-ons. Let's go ahead and get add-ons. And I'm going to search for XL Miner tool pack. It's very similar to the data analysis tool pack that you would find in Microsoft Excel. So XL Miner analysis tool pack. I'm going to search for it. I'm going to click on it. And then I'm going to install it. And it's going to install it into Google Sheets. It's going to ask me for a number of permissions. Um, I will accept those things. It's, it needs the ability to write into your Google Sheet. Um, and that is because it's going to actually calculate and add a lot of graphs, charts, you know, um, information right in here. So it needs to create and delete things in my sheets. Um, so I'm allowing this. And it's a great, uh, it's a great tool. Um, so it's done. I typically think I have to refresh. So let's see if I can actually see the add-ons. The Excel Miner tool pack. Nope, there it is. I can hit start and it's going to show up on the right hand side. Now I'm going to do everything that we just did with just a couple of clicks. I'm looking at linear regression. The linear regression always asks you, and this is why it's important to recognize the y's and the x's, it asks you for the y's. Now this tool works by when I click on that box, it pastes whatever cells I have highlighted. So I have to highlight the Y values, click in the box, and it automatically pastes that. I'm going to highlight the X values. And pay attention to the fact that when I did that, I highlighted the label for each one. So I'm going to click the labels on here. The other thing it needs me to find is where do you want to put all the summary information. I'm just going to put it right here below everything. It's not where I typically do it, but I'm going to put the output range there. And it's going to need a lot of space. Um, typically, I tell people to put the residuals, maybe a residual plot when you're on there. But um, for right now, I'm just going to put residuals. You can use these other ones. I'm sure I have videos that will talk about those as well. Uh, but once I have everything entered in here, I'm going to go ahead and it'll hit OK. And as I scroll down, I'm going to find some of the information that we just found um, before. And I'm going to shorten this up. Um, but as I go through here, all of that with just a few clicks, 
The multiple r is my correlation. The r squared is r squared. It's that coefficient of determination. It talks about you know, how well these two variables are moving together. Um, it's a strong correlation. It's up in the 0 0.9. The closer you get to 1, you've got a, a really strong or perfect correlation if it's 1. The other things I have here is that standard error. You can still see it over here. I did all that calculation before by you know, finding all the predictions, subtracting them, squaring them, adding them all together to find the standard error. But I also have down here, although this is where you have to use, and this is in the ANOVA output, the word residual instead of error. And I have the sum squared residual, or the sum squared error. I have the mean squared error. And then I always think that the squared or the standard error is going to be over here. It's not, but you'll notice from before, the, the sum squared error and the mean squared error are the two values I have there. Going further, it also shows me the equation of the line. Here is the coefficient of the intercept, the 0.03. Here's the coefficient of the x value, or the high school GPA as it's labeled it here. So the coefficient of the x value, also known as the slope. So everything I needed to find was right here. Um, as I take a look at these things, I'll highlight them. I've got my r, my r squared. I've got um, the standard error, the sum standard error, the mean standard error. And the coefficients or the equation of the line, the y equals 0.9077x plus 0 0.03. All of that done with just a few clicks in the linear regression of uh, the Excel Miner data analysis toolpath. So hopefully that will help uh, do some of these things rather quickly when you're analyzing a little bit about the this line, this best fit trend line, and trying to to find some mathematical ways to discuss um, how well that, that data fits this actual line, whether it's the correlation or the standard error.